X-Men the Animated Series case unboxing coming right up. Mr. Clicks Flicks is brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama, home of the ROC. No matter if you're in the United States or around the world, Lucky Dice Cafe has a winning role for all your gaming needs. You can visit them at LuckyDiceCafe.com or on their Facebook page using the link found in the description of this video. Mr. Clicks Flicks is also brought to you by Trollandtoad.com, one of the largest online gaming retailers. Use the promo code Mr. Clicks Flicks for 5% off your Heroclix order today. Alright guys, so like I said in the intro, we are unboxing an entire case of X-Men the Animated Series in this video. That is 20 boosters for those of you that don't know. Uh, today is release day, so hopefully I'll have this video up uh, late tonight, early tomorrow, something like that so that you're able to see it uh, fast. Hoping for a ton of things. We did a lot of pre-release unboxings, uh, so hopefully you guys check them out. Uh, I'll put one in the YouTube card now for you to see. Uh, but uh, we've seen a bunch of figures. I'd really like the um, the Iceman uh, Super Rare uh, Colossal figure, the uh, Storm uh, Super Rare Prime Colossal figure would also be cool. Uh, all of the super rare um, Brotherhood of Mutants, I haven't pulled any of them yet uh, that are the standard size, so I'm hoping to get them. So there's still a lot of the set we're missing. So uh, as always, uh, we're going to go ahead and start at the front far left of the brick and then go front back, front back, front back until we make it all the way across. Then we'll unbox our second brick and see where it goes for those of you that uh, like mapping. Last several sets, they've done a good job. I don't really think you can map these too well anymore. Uh, so... We'll see how it goes. But uh, all right, so this is front, far left, booster one. Hoping for a few things. I'm not sure what the distribution is on this set. Um, if you get uh, like two, two um, primes and a chase per case or something like that, I, I'm not sure. So we're, we're gonna find this one out together. So here we are, booster number one. All right, well, we got one of the super rares we wanted anyway. I think these uh, colossal sets are actually pretty cool, but uh, they're hard. They're hard to do these unboxings for because you can see everything at one time. So our colossal is uh, Green Puff Dragon. It's an uncommon. Uh, so that's like my third one of those. But they're still uh, they're pretty decent. I I think some people are gonna like them. Uh, so let's see here. What else did we get? And these. Uh, the the smaller figures come in these bubble wrap things so that's pretty cool there so we have a common magneto a fabian cortez uncommon common rogue i still really like that sculpt and the super rare pyro so that's that's really cool there that's definitely one that i wanted uh, and I really like that sculpt with the translucent flame and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at that figure. Pyro is number 39 in the set. He has the Brotherhood of Mutants and Freedom Force keywords. He has one trait, a special on his attack, and a special on his damage. His trait is my mutant brothers and sisters, which is uh, once per turn, when an effect would clear token that's not just clearing tokens, heal him one click. So leadership, anything like that would help him. Uh, the special on his attack is energy explosion, poison. When Pyro uses energy explosion, you may choose that he has triple target or after resolutions, he can use barrier at no cost. Either one of those is fabulous. Then the special, or um, the special on his damage is free. Destroy an object within range. Whenever Pyro uses a range destroy action to destroy a piece of blocking terrain, after resolutions, remove an action token from him. Uh, so basically, he doesn't lose anything by destroying a uh, barrier and stuff like that. So pretty cool there. He's only 50 points, has the Brotherhood of Mutants team ability, 6 range single target, 8 movement with running shot, 10 attack with that special, 17 defense with energy shield deflection and three damage with range combat expert. I love this guy. As soon as I saw him previewed, I was like, I definitely want one. I'm super happy that we pulled him. Uh, the energy explosion and poison are just great. And the ability to either choose triple target uh, energy explosion or barriers, just icing on the cake. And then the fact that he can destroy uh, blocking uh, and basically not have to do anything for it is just... Again, this guy's all win in my book, and I actually really like the sculpt on this one. All right, so here we are with booster number two. 
far left back row. That was a good first booster, and I will admit this one feels super weighty. I don't know what that means, but uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully we get a few Sentinels. Uh, those would be cool to get. Uh, I still need a Nimrod. Uh, so there's a lot of, lot of Colossals too, not necessarily just the super rare ones that I'm looking for. So let's see here. All right, so we got something we can use and then a bunch of these figures. All right, man, this guy's pretty heavy. If I can get him out of there without breaking him off the base. All right, so we have for our Colossal Exodus. A lot of people are really liking him for Popper, so I'm pretty happy to have him and uh, get to check him out. Didn't have one of those yet. We got Callisto, uh, which is a common. We got a Graydon Creed, uncommon. Ooh, Nelly, we got a good super rare. We got an Archangel super rare. That's actually my second one, but if I'm going to get an, an extra super rare, that's one that I'm going to want. Uh, and then we got Boulevard Trask. So really cool there. Definitely a good booster on that one. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a closer look at this Archangel. Archangel is number 34 in the set. He has the X-Men and Celebrity keywords. He has improved movement, ignores characters. He has a trait, which is uh, basically you pick the highest point opposing character on your opponent's team, and then uh, whenever, uh, at the beginning of your turn, if Archangel is within range and line of fire of the chosen character, uh, note his click number, then turn him to click 11, and if you do, when making the attack, you can only target that character. At the end of your turn, return him to the noted click number. Uh, so that's pretty neat. Every time those come up, they tend to be very offensive um, figures, and this one's no different. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that here in a minute, uh, what specifically is on the dial for that. His other trait is when Archangel moves at least five squares in a direct path, he can use sidestep and energy shield deflection until your next turn. Uh, so both those are helpful to keeping him alive in his approach. He's 100 points, has a 5 range single target, 12 movement with running shot and flight ability, 11 attack with psychic blast, 18 defense, invulnerability, and indomitability, 3 damage. So overall, not fantastic for what you'd want at 100 points, but on that click 11, he has a 11 movement with charge, 12 attack with super strength, 16 defense with nothing on it, and 4 damage with battle fury. So he's able to hit for 6 with a heavy object and the opponent won't be able to use um, shape change so that's going to really uh, hurt a lot of characters I like this guy a lot as a call in um, I could see somebody trying to run him just for fun uh, he's not the worst use of 100 points I've ever seen but this guy's home is definitely as a call in and I'm super happy to have one in the collection alright so here we are with booster number 3 Second from the left, front row. Again, this is another heavy-ish one. Uh, so, I don't know, sometimes you can tell what figures you get by how much it weighs. Uh, but I'm, I'm having a hard time with this set because I don't I haven't uh, experienced it a lot. So let's go ahead and see what we got. We're doing really good on pools so far. We got two super rares. So we're two for two on those. Uh, so let's see here. What did we get? All right, so that's an empty plastic thing. We got, here, we'll just fish these figures out and then take a look at them here in a minute. All right, so we got a uncommon Colossal Phoenix, I think. Yeah, this is just the, the Phoenix version, uh, G10. So pretty cool there. Then we also got, okay, it looks like we did something else. It's pretty good, too. Uh, we got a Deadpool, which some people uh, tend to like. Then we got a Kleinstock Brother, definitely... I think I needed one more of those to get a complete set of three. So definitely wanted that one. Uh, and then we have a... If I can get the plastic open here. A Robert Kelly. Senator Robert Kelly. Apologies, Senator. And we got Morph Prime. So really cool there. So we got a rare Prime in that. Uh, that's pretty cool. I actually have better luck pulling super rare primes than rare primes, so pretty cool to actually uh, pull one for you guys. So this is what the sculpt looks like for him. Uh, very similar to the uh, regular version. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at this figure. 
Morph is number 29B in the set. He has the Marauders, Assassin, and Spy keywords. He has two traits and a special on his movement. His first trait is Shape Change, but succeeds on a 4 through 6. When Morph uses it and succeeds, you may choose the new target and may choose a character friendly to the attacking character. Target must be otherwise legal. I love things that make it so that your opponent can attack themselves, so that's pretty cool. Uh, his other trait is whenever a character is KO'd after resolutions, you may place Morph in a square that character occupied. That is a great way to get him around the board. Uh, then the special on his movement is Plasticity, Sidestep, and Stealth. So what you're trying to do with this guy for 25 points is you're trying to move him in close to your opponent. Um, and that way would typically be where you would, like, with a ranged attack, ranged attack in there. Um... KO somebody that's really easy to KO and then uh, place him in that square uh, and then he can hold them there with plasticity. He has his shape change to protect himself. He has exploit weakness um, and the Brotherhood of Mutants team ability so he's going to be able to do a few things for you. Uh, I definitely like this figure a lot for 25 points. I think Marauders uh, needed a cheap guy and this is a cheap guy so I'm super interested in trying to run him. Uh, because he's really cool and looks fun and flavorful. And those are really the figures I like playing the most. Alright, so here we are with booster number four, second from the left, back row. And man, we're doing really good on pulls. We already got two super rares and a rare prime figure. So I'm not exactly sure what else is still left in this brick. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of value in these bricks so far. Uh, which, I mean, given the price increase, I'm, I'm happy about. So we're going to see, hopefully we get at least one more super rare standard size and a super rare colossal. That'd be cool. Although I don't know that that's how this uh, works. So, all right. Let's see here. We've got... Our regular sized figures, we've got a, uh. all right, so for our Colossal, we got a Sasquatch, which we already had, but you know, it's uh, something that somebody might want. We got a Wolverine, we got a Mesmero Rare. And this Wolverine's actually really good as a call-in. Uh, and there's going to be a full set review for this set um, once I, you know, get a little more stuff organized here. So we've got uh, Rogue. And then for our last figure, man, we are doing really good on this brick. We got a uh, Danger Room Construct Sabertooth. So I love that translucent look on all these danger room constructs i think that's really cool and what they're doing with these is they have the unique ring around them which is um like the uh the ones from uh, avengers infinity uh which they called primes uh i don't know why they don't just call them unique so that you can only have one per, per force why they're causing confusion by calling them primes but um, anyway, so you can have one of these per force, and that is a super good pull there. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at Sabretooth Prime. Sabretooth is number 23B in the set. He has the Brotherhood of Mutants and Robot keywords. He has improved movement, ignores elevated and hindering terrain. He has two traits. I mean three traits. He has three traits. One, two, three. His first trait is Danger Room Construct. When Sabretooth makes an attack, give him an error token after resolution for each one in the attack roll, maximum three. If Sabretooth has two or less error tokens, characters take a maximum of one damage from Sabretooth's attack. Sabretooth takes a maximum of one damage from opponent's attacks, and he can't be healed or chosen for Mastermind Protected Pulse Wave. So we've seen this on basically all of these uh, Danger Room con Constructs. Um... But still, I mean, they're they're definitely good. Uh, his uh, lessons from the Danger Room trait is when he's KO'd, uh, the character that KO'd him can use combat reflexes the rest of the game. And then his last trait is Flurry and Toughness. So really good there. He's only 45 points, has the Brotherhood of Mutants team ability, has a 12 movement with charge, 12 attack, Blades, Claws, Fangs, 18 defense with super senses and indomitability. Three damage with battle fury. For only 45 points, this guy's crazy. Uh, a bunch of people are saying use these guys as um, vehicle pilots. I agree with that, but they're also... Uh, 45 points is actually decent to use as a call-in battery for some of the cheap stuff that's coming out now. And if he does happen to end up uh, without uh, 
you know, with all those error tokens, and you're able to get use out of that 12 attack blades uh, that he has all the way till click three, um, you're definitely going to be doing pretty good. And then uh, if you end up on click three, he ends up having uh, combat reflexes with an 18 defense, so that's a 20 up close. This guy is just all win in my book. I'm super to have him. I love the translucent plastic on these. Uh, I really hope they do something like this again. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be anything else uh, like the Danger Room where they'd be able to do it, where it's like a, a simulated program. But, uh, yeah, definitely really happy to have him. All right, guys, so almost halfway through this brick. This is the halfway uh, marker. So this is dead center front row. We've pulled two primes, two super rares. I don't really know how much more we're going to get out of this. Uh, we haven't pulled any super rare colossals, haven't pulled any sentinels. Uh, no friends of humanity generics. So hopefully we get a couple of those. We'll see. All right. So it looks like calling my shots on this one sort of all right let's see here let's get all these guys out of here all right and we got a rare cyclops uh sentinel this guy is really good i'm super happy to get uh him uh, this is actually my second one but i might actually keep this one uh because he is so good uh then we have a broken off her base belladonna but the good news is that it's straight from the click so that's you know a little bit of glue see she even just sits there on her own not a big deal for that one uh then we also have a friends of humanity so i really did call the shots on this one then we have a blob uh he's actually pretty good and a beast which is pretty decent too so overall, uh, no super rares in that booster, but a really good one. This Cyclops Sentinel is fabulous. All right, so here we are with booster number six, dead center back row. Uh, we're actually doing really good. Even when we're not getting a super rare or a prime, we're getting good rares. Uh, so let's see how we do for this one. Still would really like a Nimrod, would really like one or two generic uh, Sentinels. Um, so let's see what... Uh, okay, so... We got some stuff here. We got a Sentinel Squad 1. I actually didn't have one of these, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and then we also got... Oh, man. Okay. We're doing real good. We got a... If I can get everybody out of these bags. I like these little... Um, these little pop bag things but they're they're hard to get the figures out of uh so we've got a gene gray here we've got uh, another kleinstock brother so cool there a magneto and a super rare mystique so we're doing is that all the super rare brotherhood of mutants you guys let me know in the comments below if there were more of those uh that uh, other than this and pyro i'm not sure off the top of my head so she's really cool i like this sculpt she's difficult to hit uh if i can get like two of her i think i might keep them so let's go ahead and take a look at what she does and why i'd be so excited to get her mystique is number 38 in the set she has the brotherhood of mutants freedom force assassin and spy keywords she has two traits the first one is shape change free give a Standard opposing character a shapeshift token, removing it from all, anywhere else. When Mystique uses shape change, if there is a character with her shapeshift token and the attacker doesn't have line of fire to them, she succeeds on a result of a 2 through 6. A character always has line of fire to themselves, uh, so she's able to basically have a 5 out of 6 chance at succeeding on her shape change, which is fantastic. Um, then her other trait is, uh, my mutants, brothers and sisters. So basically if she removes an action token other than clearing, uh, then she will heal a click. So if another character has leadership or something like that, uh, she'll be good to go. She's 60 points, has the brotherhood of mutants team ability, has a six range, single target, eight movement with stealth, 11 attack with precision strike, 17 defense, combat reflexes, and two damage with leadership. This is actually a deceptively good figure, and she's good 
As far as a tie-up figure, she's good for calling in figures. I could see people definitely trying to run two of her, so I'm super happy I got at least one of her. I might try to hunt down another one, but I'm, I think I'm just going to be happy with one. She's got a decent keyword in Brotherhood of Mutants out of this set, uh, so super happy we pulled her, and I actually really like the sculpt on this. It's hard to do sculpts of shape-shifting characters, but the fact that they just kind of did like a, a base form, uh, they executed it really well. All right, here we are with booster number seven, second from the right back row. Um, I can't really say that this uh, unboxing could go much better. Uh, the only thing that could maybe make it a little better would be to pull a super rare Colossal. But, I mean, we've gotten two primes, three super rares, uh, at least one good rare Colossal. So, I, I don't really know how much more I can honestly expect here, but... We're going to try. We're trying our best here. All right. So we got a super rare Colossal. We got the super rare Shadow King. So really cool there. And then we also got, if I can get everybody out of their little plastic bag, we got Scanner, who is uh, pretty good for Acolytes. We got a cable. You actually need three of those, and I only have one, so happy about that. Um, we also got a Boulevard Trask and the rare regular version of Morph. So really cool there. Uh, definitely a good pull. And don't worry, the <laughs> cards were in the box. Uh, I, I was starting to get nervous for a second. I was like, I don't see the cards, but they're there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at the Shadow King. And his sculpt's actually really cool, so I'm, I'm happy to get him. Shadow King is number G023A in the set. He has the Brotherhood of Mutants, Monster, and Past keywords. He has improved targeting, ignores hindering terrain. He has two traits, a special on his movement and a special on his attack. His first trait is Shadow King can reduce penetrating damage. That's always something welcome to see. His other trait is Shadow King can't be targeted by opposing characters five or more squares away. We've seen this a bunch actually in this set and before that we've seen it on uh, things like the Indigo Power Battery and stuff. So it's cool to see things like this also. Uh, the special on his movement is Mind Control, Phasing Teleport. Once per turn when Shadow King uses either, after resolutions he may use the other one at no cost. So basically he has move and attack. Um, where he can phasing away and then uh, free action mind control, which is fabulous. Then the special on his attack is Penetrating Psyche Blast. When Shadow King KOs a character after resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character that was adjacent to that character. So it's basically like a souped up energy explosion, which I really like to see. He has four different point lines, 700 points, 500 points, 300 points, and 150 points. He has the Power Cosmic Team ability, and he is just, in general, a pretty good figure. At 700 points, he starts off with an 8 move, with an eight range triple target, 10 movement with running shot, 12 attack with the special, 19 defense with invincibility, 6 damage with outwit and colossal damage symbol. Then at 500 points, he has an 11 movement with sidestep, 11 attack with that special, 18 defense with impervious, 5 damage without wit. At 300 points, he has a 10 movement with sidestep, 12 attack with that special, 19 defense with impervious, and 5 damage. And then at 150 points, he has an 11 movement with that special, 11 attack with pulse wave, 18 defense, invulnerability, and 4 damage with probability control i like him best at 150 and 300 points just a really good figure i'm happy that i pulled him because that was a cool episode where storm went to africa to uh, save her i forget if it was her stepson or godson or whatever but really cool reference to the tv show super happy to have him all right we're coming into the home stretch final three boosters this is probably the heaviest booster of them all um I don't know what that means, but uh, anyway, so this is uh, second from the right back row, and this thing is, this is definitely more weighty than the other ones that I said were heavy, so. Oh, awesome. Okay, so we got another super rare, and he's actually tied in there, so I don't know. Give me, give me a second off camera here to do this. I'm twisting. 
I'm twisting. Although I appreciate that they did that so that he wouldn't just fall out and break. Uh, so we've got a super rare Colossal Krakoa. Awesome pool there. Uh, then we also got uh, Callisto, who's common. We got a Command Guard. Um, they're okay. They're not great. But they are an army builder, so... We got the Rare Bastion, and he's actually really good, too. Uh, I already had one, but he, he's, he's good. Uh, and then we also have the Uncommon Toad. So, great booster there. I love this sculpt. Look at, look at how cool this is. So, for those of you that don't know, Krakoa is a living island. Uh, it's actually pretty important right now in the, the Hickman run of X-Men. But, uh, anyway... It's a living island, so as you can see on the top of this, you've got your palm trees and roots and stuff like that. He's got like a little mountain thing. This is a good sculpt. Good job, WizKids. You knocked this one out of the park. So I'm super excited to have this one. I, I saw this sculpt at a pre-release, but I didn't end up with it. So I'm, I'm happy to get one. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at what he actually does. Krakoa is number G021 in the set. He has one trait, a special on his movement, and a special on his damage. His trait is Steel Energy. Opposing characters that occupy or are adjacent to a hindering terrain marker uh, that are adjacent to its hindering terrain markers must break away as if breaking away from K Krakoa, and it may target them with a close attack regardless of adjacency. Uh, that's just good, so we'll see what else is going on. And also, he is a monster keyword, so a bunch of uh, monster fans are going to be happy with him. Special in his movement is Flurry, Plasticity... Uh, I'm sorry... Plas yes, Flurry, Plasticity, and Phasing Teleport. Uh, all of those are good. And uh, at some point I'll learn how to read, but that's uh, that's neither here nor there. Then the special on his damage is free. If no friendly character has been placed this turn, choose an opposing character that attacked Krakoa or damaged a friendly character since your last turn. Place Krakoa such that he can make a close attack targeting, and then uh, the chosen character then do so using Quake at no cost. If you did, after resolutions, generate a hindering terrain marker in all squares Krakoa occupied at the beginning and the end of this action. So that's definitely really cool there. And he has four different starting lines. 600 points, 400 points, 150, and 70 points. Uh, and he has that, um, that special on his damage. Uh, his starting click on all but the 400 point line. So at 600 points, he has a 10 movement with stealth, 12 attack with quake, 20 defense with invincibility and indomitability, five damage with that special and the colossal damage symbol. At 400 points, he has a nine movement with sidestep, 12 attack with quake, 19 defense, invincibility, four damage with close combat expert. Then at 150 points, he has an 8 movement with sidestep, 10 attack with poison, 18 defense with invincibility, and 3 damage with that special. And then at 70 points, he has a 7 movement with stealth, 10 attack with poison, 18 defense, invincibility, and 3 damage with that special. Uh, I like the 70 point line pretty good. Uh, and then after that... Um, the 600 point line for big games that I suppose I would pick, but just a really cool figure. This is probably one of the best sculpts in the set, in my opinion, and we haven't had a Krakoa figure ever. We have had it as a map before, so super interesting to have it as a figure, and I'm really happy we pulled it, even if it's not the most competitive piece in the set. Still really happy to have him in the collection. All right, so final two boosters. Here we are at far right front row. Uh, so, just to recap, we've already pulled out of this one brick. We haven't even done the whole case yet. We've gotten three super rares, two primes, and two super rare colossals. So, pretty good there. I don't really have much room to complain uh, if these last two are duds. But hopefully they aren't. Uh, we could still get a chase, possibly, maybe. Um, so, okay, I see something I'm happy to see. All right, we've got a rare. Come on out of there. I don't want to break you. We've got a rare Dark Phoenix, and she is beautiful. I didn't have that one, so I'm, I'm happy to have her. Uh, pretty cool there. 
Then we also got Fabian Cortez, a Assassin's Guild person. It just says Assassin's Guild. Okay. Uh, I felt I felt silly there for a second. I was like, I can't remember its name. Uh, then we've got Scanner, who is pretty cool. And uh, what is her name? Amelia Vaught. Uh, so that's actually, I know all we did was get a rare, but that's a pretty good rare to get. So I'm really happy with that booster. All right, guys, final booster, brick number one. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button for that last booster magic that is always so good to me where I just have the best pulls in the last booster. So make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And don't worry, don't go anywhere. We are going to do the second brick. So let's go ahead and see what we pull here. Hopefully a chase. Fingers crossed. I mean, that'd be insane if we got all that stuff plus a chase. So let's see how we do. Oh. Oh, the Colossal kind of fell out on this one. That's why it's having trouble. Okay. So, our Colossal is Juggernaut. Uh, we actually didn't have him yet, so that's really good. And this guy is really good in Popper, so I'm, I'm excited to have him. And then we also got, for the other stuff, uh, we got a, for our rare, we got Random. We got a guard command who's uh, doing a Michael Jackson dance. We got Deadpool. And we got an uncommon Sabretooth. Uh, so actually we are getting things that we don't need or that we do need uh, even if we aren't pulling a super rare or a prime. But that was a crazy brick. How good was that brick, guys? You let me know in the comments below. Uh, what your favorite pool was from that brick and I'm gonna go ahead and get the other brick set up to unbox All right, so here we are ready to start brick number two of this case uh, If you guys see something you like in this video make sure to let me know what it is I always enjoy reading that stuff if you guys want to support the channel so that I can continue to do unboxings like this Make sure to check out patreon.com slash mr. Clicks as I do tend to give away some of the things I pull Although uh, there will be a brick that I unbox where everything from that brick will go to Patreon as well as other cool rewards It's just a thank you for supporting me. It really does help the channel grow So again, check out patreon.com slash mr. Clicks for more details. So here we are booster number one far left front row i can't imagine it's going to be better than the last brick but we're going to check and see and then you guys let me know after i unbox both which brick you like better all right so we are starting off with a colossal prime this is the stealth sentinel so pretty cool there then we also got other things don't worry we got a Beast, a Rare Fantasia, uh, who is actually, I don't really care for that one. I've used her a couple times already and was pretty dissatisfied with how it went. Um, then we got Amelia Vaught and Kalisto. So actually, that was a pretty good one. I didn't have this Colossal Prime yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at him and what he does. Stealth Sentinel is number G001B in the set. He has the Sentinel armor and robot keywords. He has two traits, a special on his attack and a special on his defense. His first trait is called Prime Directive and it's the same as the other Sentinels where at the beginning of your turn, Stealth Sentinel may move one square. If they have X-Men or Brotherhood of Mutants keyword, he can move an additional square. So sidestep without being sidestep is always welcome. His other trait is called Power Adaptation. Stealth Sentinel can't be healed except by this trait. Free. Turn it to the same click number of a different color, then heal one click. Stealth Sentinel can't be healed above his starting click number on either dial. Special on his attack is Incapacitate, Poison, Smoke Cloud is free. Smoke Cloud is free is just awesome. Uh, that makes it so that he can basically uh, use his stealth anywhere on the map. And then the special on his defense is Stop toughness 
He has three different point lines, 200 points, 150 points, and 100 points. And he's actually got a bunch of different starting lines. And as you can see on the dials, one is heavily tilted towards offense. The other is heavily tilted towards defense. Um, and I'm not really sure which one I like better. I definitely like that 20 defense on the 200 point line. Uh, on the defensive clicks, and I love that 13 attack 5. Uh, so 200 points is probably my favorite one, followed by 100 points. The 200 point, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 150 points um, just doesn't really seem to be as good as the other ones for the points. But still, this is a really cool prime figure um, that I'm excited to have. I think it's cool with the translucent... Um, plastic that they used definitely going to get some mileage out of this one all right so here we are for booster number two far left back row uh let's go ahead and see we already pulled a colossal prime so i doubt we're going to get the colossal super rare prime so a little bit of a sad face on that but we'll see how it goes you never know uh hopefully we're still hoping for chase we haven't pulled any chases yet but we've pulled three primes so far in this case so we're doing pretty good i can't really complain too much um, all right, so let's see here. What did we get? We got the Uncommon. The Uncommon Phoenix. We got, okay, we got something good. Uh, we got a Toad. We got a Command Guard. A Kleinstock brother. And last, but certainly not least, we got a Harry Leland Chase figure. So pretty cool there. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at what he does. Uh, it's actually some pretty cool stuff, so I'm, I'm okay with getting him. Uh, so let's go ahead and check that out. Harry Leland is number 45 in the set. He has the Hellfire Club keyword. He has two traits. First one is opposing characters within four squares modify their attack minus two and damage minus two if they have moved this turn. So that's fabulous, especially with all the characters that are in this set that have characters outside of five can't target them. So that's definitely something worth having there. Um, then it also has opposing characters can't be placed from anywhere el from elsewhere on the map within four squares of Harry Leland. So basically it makes it so that um, Colossal Retaliators can't reach him. Then his other trait is Outwit, but only to choose a black power or a special power. When Harry Leland KOs a higher point character, after resolutions, remove all action tokens from him and heal him two clicks. Uh, so that's really good there, considering he's got a pretty short dial and he's only 50 points, so he's very likely to KO somebody that's more points than him. Um, just by virtue of that they're going to be more points. Uh, he has a 4 range dual target, 6 movement with sidestep, 9 attack with incapacitate, 18 defense with toughness, 1 damage with empower. Um, so he's not readily powerful when you look at him, but the fact that nobody can really get within 4 squares of him uh, without having a minus two so you figure if somebody has a 12 they're trying to swing a 10 on an 18 or if you go to click two it'd be like a 10 on a um, 19 or an 8 on a 19 you start to see how this guy's really survivable and then the dual target incapacitate makes so you can lock down two characters on your opponent's team uh, this guy's actually pretty decent and i'm fairly happy that we pulled him all right so time for booster number three front Second from the left, we already pulled our our chase figure, so doubtful we're going to get another one. Although you never know, crazier things have happened in these videos. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to see, hoping for some super rares. A super rare Sauron would be pretty cool still. Uh, there's a few other things I'd take too. So uh, let's see here. All right, so there's that stuff. And our Colossal is a... Um, onslaught so we've got a couple of him so uh, but that's okay he's actually pretty good so he'll be easily tradable uh, we also got a Jubilee which is the rare I guess for this pack uh, we got a Wolverine a Jean Grey and a Friends of Humanity generic. So 
Uh, not the best booster. I already had everything in that one. Uh, I can use the Friends of Humanity generic, though. But uh, this guy's actually not... He, he's actually pretty good, so... Uh, he will for sure be easily tradable. All right, guys, so here we are. Booster number four, second from the left, back row. Uh, so far, we got the chase figure, but it's good to see that the front side of this one hasn't been front, hasn't been loaded like the, the last brick. I was going to be worried if like all the good stuff was always to the left. Uh, so let's go ahead and check it out. Still haven't gotten that Nimrod yet. Uh, haven't gotten any of the generic Sentinels. Uh, so... Still a lot of easy to get stuff that we're missing. All right, so we got the rare Proteus. This guy's a hoss, uh, so that's that's good. We got him because he's going to be expensive later just because of what he does uh, before they errata him. Although I mean they they may not errata him, and he just might make barriers forever. Uh, so we've got a Wolverine. We've got a cable, so that gives me three cables. So I'm able to use him to his fullest potential, which is good. Uh, then we've got a Deadpool and another Blob. So that was actually a good booster. I needed him, didn't have him, uh, so good booster there. All right, so booster number five, which will mark halfway through, is dead center, front row. Uh, haven't pulled any super rares yet. Uh, we got a good rare and we got a chase though, so we're, we're doing okay. Uh, hoping for a super rare Colossal, too. That'd be pretty awesome. Definitely would like that Iceman one. And, okay, I see two things in here we were looking for. All right, now we're cooking. It's always nice when you, like, need some of the low rarity stuff so you can get excited about opening boosters. <laughs> That's that's the worst. Like, if you have a lot of a set and you open a booster and you're like, I need zero out of five of these. Um, so has that ever happened to you guys where you just open a whole booster and you're like, I don't need anything out of this. Like it doesn't have any generics, doesn't have anything. And then like, you know, if you need like a low rarity figure, you know, it's always nice to be able to pull that stuff because, you know, it's, you can be excited in pretty much every booster. That's why I like it when they have sets with like, you know, three or four generics in them. Cause you know, you're all, you always have something to look forward to. So our colossal is Nimrod, and this guy's a hoss, so definitely needed him for Popper. Then we've got a Fabian Cortez, a common rogue. Uh, she's actually pretty decent, and I love the sculpt on it. We got a Friends of Humanity generic and a super rare Sauron. Look at that, like the hypnotism coming out of his eyes. He just looks slick. I, I love this. They haven't done this since the Wolverine and the X-Men one, uh, which was actually was that my first unboxing i ever filmed i feel like it might have been so that was the last time we had a sauron uh and his sculpt was okay not great and the figure was okay not great this one's actually pretty decent so let's go ahead and take a closer look at him fabulous booster super happy with it sauron is number 40 in the set he has the brotherhood of mutants savage land animal and scientist keywords he has two traits and a special on his defense his first trait is my mutants brothers and sisters so basically as long as he uh, removes an action token that's other than clearing he heals one click so that's been great every time we've seen it uh, his other trait is poison when sauron uses it and damages one or more opposing character after ev resolution remove an action token from him so that's just great. Uh, so he has a built-in way to use my mutant brothers and sisters. Then his uh, special on his defense is stop support. When Sauron uses it and heals a character after resolution, heal Sauron one click. Uh, so that's just a great way uh, for him to heal up uh, off that stop click. He's 85 points, has the Brotherhood of Mutants team ability. Starts off with an 11 movement with charge, 11 attack blades, claws, fangs, 17 defense, invulnerability, and indomitability, 3 damage with shape change. Uh, so as you can see in the middle of the dial there, he's got a bunch of um, steel energy. At the end of his dial, he's got a way to heal up back to the steel energy, and then uh, if he poisons somebody and damages them, he heals back up again. So as you can see, there's you'd be able to heal, um, you know, Two clicks a turn, possibly, with him. So this is going to be a really tough guy to KO, especially if you consider some of the uh, different objects in the game and stuff like that. This guy is really tough, and I love the sculpt on this, and I'm super happy they made him again. It's been so long since we had one. So really excited to add him to the collection. 
Wow, what a good booster. Okay, so here we are with booster number six, dead center back row. This is another heavy one again. I, I also, I keep forgetting to mention, because I, I would like another super rare colossal. Uh, Mojo would be good too. Uh, Mojo, uh, although the Iceman, I believe, is more competitive, but either one of those would be good. Uh, so, or that, like I said, that super rare colossal uh, prime uh, storm, but we already got a prime uh, colossal, so I doubt we'll get another one. All right, <laughs> okay. I guess I'm calling the shots right now. So we got here. Let me let me untwist them. Uh, I do appreciate though that they're using these little twist ties to try to make it so that figures that are likely to get broken are less likely to break. So definitely cool there. Except what's not cool is my mojo's missing an arm, and it's not in the box. <laughs> So, I don't know, maybe I'll talk to product replacement. I'll, I'll let you guys know how that goes. Uh, so, we've got a Boulevard Trask, a Bastion Rare, a Magneto Common, and a Graydon Creed. Uh, so, I mean, I'm happy to have Mojo. I'm a little disappointed that it is a broken Mojo. But uh, still, let's go ahead and, you know, you can see how cool the sculpt is, even without the, the arm. So, little disappointed it's not in there with <laughs> Because I would have been more than happy to glue it. But anyway, uh, I'll let you guys know. I'll, I'll have like a little update where, you know, I'm sure WizKids will make it right. But let's go ahead and take a look at this figure and what it does, because that's really the important thing. Mojo is number G022 in the set. He has the Mojoverse, Celebrity, Monster, Mystical, and Ruler keywords. He has Improved Movement, Ignores Characters. He has two traits and a special on his movement. His first trait is called Behind the Scenes. Mojo can't be targeted by opposing characters five or more squares away. We've seen this a bunch in this set, uh, so I'm happy to see it on this guy. His other trait is, whenever a character misses all targets of their attack, give Mojo a board token. Free, remove two board tokens to either place Mojo anywhere on the map or make an attack. Uh, so it's important that it's uh, for friendly or opposing. And those um, board tokens actually accumulate pretty quickly uh, from what I've seen. So that is definitely a stellar ability. Then... The special on his movement is called Keep the Cameras on Them. Sidestep. When an opposing character uses sidestep after resolutions, Mojo may move up to two squares. So basically, if somebody breaks away with sidestep, you're able to sidestep right next to him again, which is fantastic. Uh, he has three different point lines, 250, 175, and 75. To start at 250 points, he has a seven range single target, eight movement with that special 11 attack with Psychic Blast, 18 defense with Invincibility and in, uh, Indomitability, 4 damage with Perplex, and he is a giant-sized character. At 175 points, he has an 8 movement with that special, 11 attack with Psychic Blast, 18 defense with Invulnerability, and 4 damage with Probability Control. And then at 75 points, he has an 8 movement with that special, 11 attack, with telekinesis, 18 defense with invulnerability and three damage with perplex. Um, I like him a lot at the 75 point line. I feel like you're going to get good use out of him. I know you're losing that psychic blast, but it's just really economical for the points. You're only losing that one defense. Uh, I'm sorry, that one damage stat, and you have 100 extra points because you're not playing at 175 to make up for that, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. Definitely one of the most desired figures for me out of this set, uh, even though mine's broken. Um, I will update you guys on if WizKids actually uh, replaces it with another mojo or not because I really wanted this figure, and I'm super happy to have them, and if they aren't going to replace them with the same figure. I'll just keep this broken one, but uh, there will be an update video letting you guys know what happened either way. All right, so we've pulled one super rare uh, standard figure, one chase standard figure, and a super rare colossal. So hopefully, oh, and a prime colossal. So hopefully we get another prime somewhere and at least two more super rares. Um, again, I would really like that super rare, uh, 
that super rare Iceman Colossal. A little disappointed with the, the Mojo. Uh, not I really wanted Mojo, but I'm disappointed he was broke. So hopefully we get something good to kind of make up for it. Um, so we've got some figures here. Oh, here's we didn't have this one, so that's cool. Um, come on, all right, all right. So for our Colossal, we got. Red Onslaught, uh, so that's pretty cool there. Did not have one of those yet. So that's always nice when you get something you didn't have. And he's a rare uh, Colossal. So we also got, um, whatever his name is there, Sabretooth, Rogue, a Assassin's Guild person, and... Gambit, so really cool there. That's actually my second Gambit, but he was really high on the once list of a lot of people, so he'll be easy enough to get rid of. Uh, that was a pretty decent booster. I got a generic I needed, got a rare Colossal, so uh, you know, no real room to complain about that one. All right, coming to the final three boosters. You guys let me know at the end of this which brick you think was better uh, and what pool you might want uh, from this case. Always find that stuff interesting to read. So here we are. Uh, this is booster number uh, eight, which is uh, second from the right back row. And let's see what we got here. We got another rare Colossal. I don't think we had him, so that's cool there. Uh, so we got rare Vange Wengon. Uh, so that's pretty neat there. I kept getting the green puff dragons, but none of that guy. Uh, then we got a Graydon Creed, a Assassin's Guild generic, a Scanner, and a Cyclops Uncommon. So pretty cool there. I uh, didn't have this one can use the Assassin's Guild person, so not a bad booster. All right, last two boosters. Hopefully we get a super rare in each one. Otherwise, I'm going to be a little disappointed, so send me your energy on trying to get this. Uh, this is uh, far right front row. Hopefully we get something good. I'm trying to think of like super rares that I don't have yet from this set. Uh, the Mr. Sinister and Legion. I don't, I don't have either of those, so we'll see how this goes here. All right, we get, did get one thing that I'm pretty good with having. Uh, so we got a just generic Sentinel, which is pretty good because you're. I, I feel like everybody's going to need five or so of them, so that's okay there. Uh, then we got a uh, Senator Kelly, a Beast, a... Boulevard Trask and the Rare Storm. So, uh, out of that one, the only thing I needed was the Sentinel, but I'm, I mean, you only get, you know, one in a whole case seems like not a lot. So, hopefully, you know, we get more of those because I only had two. Uh, so, anyway, uh, that's decent. You know, we got a Colossal Generic that we could use. All right, so here we are with booster number 10. Far right, back row, man alive. It feels like this second brick has not been nearly as good as the first, so hopefully we get something phenomenal. Thank you for joining me. Hit that thumbs up button again if you want to send me some last booster magic energy. And let's see what we get here. Thank you again for joining me for these. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you're sure to see all my videos when they come up. And make sure to check, keep a lookout for that brick unboxing. Uh, that will be compliments of trollandtoad.com. So let's see what we got. All right, well, we got something. Okay, we got we got something. Okay, we're good. We're good, we're good. All right, so we got the Uncommon Proteus. We got a scanner. We got... Assassin Guild, Belladonna, and 
Mr. Sinister Rogue Geneticist. So we actually did pretty decent. We got a uh, chase. Um, only two super rares. Uh, super rare Colossal. Um, and a Colossal Prime. So we didn't do as bad as I was thinking on this. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at Mr. Sinister Rogue Geneticist. He's actually pretty cool. Mr. Sinister Rogue Geneticist is number 43A in the set. He has the Marauder, Savage Land, Past, and Scientist keywords. He has two traits. The first one is his title character abilities, which we're fairly familiar with at this point, where he starts off with a certain amount, and then you add them or subtract them, and he gets extra abilities. And then his other trait is Leader of the Nasty Boys. The bystander, the bystanders printed on this card are Nasty Boys. So let's see. He doesn't have any specials other than that. He has his uh, title abilities, which his first one is a plus one, where free, in this turn, when Mr. Sinister Rogue Geneticist or a Nasty Boy hits, give a hit character a DNA sample token. If that character already has DNA sample, sample token, gain one additional plot point. Uh, now, it's important to note he does start with zero, so it's pretty crucial to get uh, multiple uh, plot points out of this. His other one is... Minus zero, free this turn when Mr. Sinister Rogue Geneticist attacks a character with one or more DNA sample tokens, modify attack and damage plus X, where X is your plot points. Uh, so that's pretty good there. Uh, his stats aren't terrible, so it's nice that uh, he's going to be getting a little buff there. And then his third um, title ability is Nasty Boy's Attack, free, generate a Nasty Boy bystander. Each distinct Nasty Boy has a max one. Uh, so really cool there. The Nasty Boys all do different things on their own. Uh, there's an obvious tie-up close combat guy. There's a pulse waver. There's a charge blades guy. And then there's a uh, incapacitate giant reach uh, plasticity guy. Uh, so all of them have something good to do. He's 100 points. Uh, has a 7 movement with stealth. 11 attack. With Precision Strike, 18 Defense with Invincibility and Indomitability, 3 Damage without Wit, and a 6 Range Single Target. I like this guy a lot. I didn't like him when I very first saw him, but the more I look at this card for this video, I'm like, I'm really happy I pulled him. I definitely can see myself playing this figure, and I want to get a few games in with him. Uh, so... Super excited to have him as part of the collection. Alright guys, so that's all I have for you today in this unboxing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a share. It really helps keep me motivated to make these videos and it also lets YouTube know that other people might enjoy these videos. That's all I have for you today. As always, please remember that it's only critical miss if you don't have probability control.